Uh, just one sec. Now. We can start admitting people. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Just waiting for people to come in from the waiting room and then we'll get started. Thank you for coming. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that was that's everyone who was uh, in the waiting room. Oh. So uh, I think we should begin. So hello and welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Jan Watson and along with Oxford program alumni Vicki Dorgan and with technical assistance from oh. Katia Sergiva, we're here to tell you about our study in Oxford programs for June 2024 and to address your questions. I will start with an overview of the programs and then we'll, I will turn to our program alumna to tell you about her experience with the program. That should all take about 25 minutes and then we will turn to your questions. Our program tonight will end no later than 7 p.m. Central Time. Because there are quite a few of you here this evening, we will take your questions through the Zoom chat function. You'll find the chat at the bottom of your Zoom window Click on it and then type in your question or comment in the text box and send. We recommend that you use speaker view during the program and your view controls are at the top right of your Zoom screen. I want to begin by recommending that you visit our Study in Oxford web pages. There is an overview page and from there you can read and review the details of the two programs, a fortnight in Oxford and a senite in Oxford. You'll find helpful information such as the seminar details, recommended and required texts, as well as information about what's included, accommodations, fees, traveler requirements, and the cancellation policy for each program. You can find the link to the Study in Oxford web pages in the chat. The application period for both programs is now open, and we'll talk more about that later. I want to assure you that you will be well looked after while you're in Oxford. The staff from the University of Oxford Department of Continuing Education are present daily, and I'm there too to manage things and to represent the Graham School and the University of Chicago. Our partnership with the University of Oxford Department of Continuing Education goes back 25 years with our fortnight in Oxford program beginning on the first Sunday in June. Some may view study in Oxford as trip of a lifetime or something from your bucket list, but many students return with us to Oxford again and again. It is a special place, rarefied air, and it has an effect on you that is difficult to explain. This ancient city with sidewalks to match is home to the oldest English speaking university in the world. It is an easy trip from the London airports or from the center of London, or really from anywhere in the UK. We are located in the heart of Oxford, close to colleges, museums, libraries, restaurants, shops, and some historic pubs. We are well situated for all that Oxford has to offer, all within walking distance. You can arrange for a taxi or go to a taxi stand, and there are rideshare services available in Oxford. I'd like to talk about each program. For the fortnight in Oxford and the Senight in Oxford, our base is at Ruley House, where we stay, dine, and take our seminars. Ruley House, run by the Oxford Department of Continuing Education, is a series of Victorian buildings that have been combined to form a small college. There's a leafy courtyard with tables and benches and a large common room with newspapers and comfy chairs, and that's where we have our tea break each day. 
The common room also has a small bar that opens in the evening, and students often uh, gather there for a beverage before dinner or after. Ruley House has a library with a pleasant study area, and there is a computer room available to guests. There will be other groups staying and studying at Ruley, which just adds to the fun. One important thing to note, there are no bedrooms on the ground floor and some classrooms are on the second floor. Keep in mind that in England, the first floor is one up one flight of stairs. Participants must be able to climb stairs. There is limited elevator access and the elevators do not go to all the places we need to go. The seminar is the highlight of the Fortnite and the Sunlight in Oxford programs. The seminar meets for three hours each weekday and is taught by an Oxford tutor. There will be advanced reading and required, and there may be some homework assigned, such as reading a handout or preparing for a project. A certificate of completion from the University of Oxford Department of Continuing Education is granted to students at the end of the program. So let's talk about a fortnight in Oxford. Two seminars are offered during a fortnight in Oxford. Participants sign up for the seminar of their choice. However, each seminar has a limited number of seats available. If a seminar fills, then a participant must take the seminar with seats remaining. Dr. Angus McFadgen will teach the literature and culture course, Proust and Joyce, Two Paths of Modernist Literature. And Anne Lyon, is offering the History and Politics Seminar, 15 Centuries of British Monarchy. A fortnight in Oxford is our signature program with two full weeks in glorious Oxford at the end of Trinity term when classes are still in session. You will see students in black robes rushing to their exams and Oxford dons in academic attire heading to convocations. There are college balls in the evenings with students in fancy dress, and the final student-produced plays and concerts are taking place in college gardens and chapels. After a few days, you get to know your way around and start to feel comfortable. Our days begin with breakfast, then we go to our seminars, and we have a tea break scheduled halfway through, and that's followed by lunch. We will have some lunch at, um, some after lunch activities and lectures, but there will be free time to follow your own interests. And one day of the weekend is open for side trips to tour the Cotswolds, go to uh, even Bath. The fortnight can accommodate 28 students, providing lots of pleasant companions during the two week program. So what's included? Your tuition covers your seminar, your housing, and most meals. We'll take an afternoon trip to Kelmscott Manor, the home of designer William Morris, and another to stately Rosham Gardens. In Oxford, we will enjoy a series of afternoon lectures, take a guided walking tour, and enjoy a highlights of the Ashmolean Museum tour. And we'll attend an Evensong choral program in one of the college chapels. Again, there will be free time to pursue your own interests. All right, let's touch on a Senite in Oxford. A Senite is a one week program that offers an in depth seminar and an itinerary featuring all the highlights. This will be a smaller group with a maximum of 19 students. Everyone will be in the same seminar. Each morning, we will study together in the seminar. Then most days after lunch, we'll set out on our group field trips. The Senite seminar is Jane Austen in context with Dr. Emma Plaskett. So what's included? Your tuition covers your seminar, housing, and most meals. Field trips include a walking tour of Oxford and its colleges with a blue badge guide. 
we will tour the Pitt Rivers Museum and Natural History Museum, which is an impressive Victorian structure filled with an amazing collection. Towards the end of our week's day, we will intend attend an Evensong choral program at one of the colleges. Most important, Dr. Plaskett will lead a trip to Chawton, where we will visit Chawton House and the Jane Austen House Museum. For a special evening, we will enjoy a dinner in a dining hall at St. Edmund's Hall. So let's talk a bit about traveler requirements. The study and Oxford programs are open to anyone interested in educational travel, including Graham School students, UChicago alumni, friends of the university, and other lifelong learners. Participants for both programs should keep in mind that the programs require considerable walking and that buildings are historic, meaning there are limited elevators. As I've said, most bedrooms and classrooms are on upper floors. Travel and medical insurance are highly recommended. The University of Chicago does not offer this type of insurance, nor are we experts in that field. If the program is canceled by the University of uh, Oxford or the University of Chicago, and you are still registered, a full refund will be given. Highly unlikely that that would happen. So more about uh, applications. Now I suspect you're curious about the process and it couldn't be easier. You go to the Graham School website and under programs, click on travel study, study in Oxford, Choose your preferred program, either the Fortnight or the Senite, and click on Apply. Next, you will see a page that looks like this. Note the course and section number, and then click on Apply Now. Then you will sign in, as many of you do, when registering for any Graham School course. If you are not one of our students, you will create an account using your email as your username and create a password you will remember. You will need the course code and the section number, and you will need your passport information and emergency contact information in order to complete the application form. There are three sections to the application, personal information, special needs and requests, and the program acknowledgement. Each section is just a few questions. We ask you about your UChicago affiliation or degree year. If you did not go to school at UChicago, that is not a problem. Your affiliation could be that you are a basic program student or you take other courses from the Graham School or that your children or grandchildren attend the university. Perhaps you attend online lectures, Humanities Day, or subscribe to Court Theater, or you are a friend of the university. We also ask you about your non-U Chicago education background. We ask you about dietary restrictions and any disability or special need. We can accommodate many dietary restrictions, but again, very important to note that considerable walking, and ability to climb stairs. When you've completed all three sections of the application, you hit submit. All right. This is a photo from a fortnight in Oxford 2019. You can see that everyone is an adult, that there is a good mix of genders, and doesn't everybody look friendly? <laughs> We always have a good split between couples and single participants. So this gives you a very good idea of what an Oxford group can look like. Now at this time, I'd like for you to hear from one of our Oxford program alumni. I'll turn things over to Vicki Dorgan, who has attended the Fortnite in Oxford twice, and this year will attend the Senite program. All right, take it away, Vicki. Great, thank you very much. And um, welcome to all of you to this um, seminar. And um, it's a terrific thing to consider. It was just um, three years ago that I heard about the um, fortnight at Oxford on the life of Winston Churchill. And um, 
I actually remembered Winston Churchill's funeral when I was a when I was a girl. So um, and my dad was in World War II. So it was something that was real important to me. And I went and I had no idea just how delightful the experience would be. We went to um, Blenheim, the um, um, home of um, Winston Churchill's um, uh, father. Um, you know, his father was a second son, but anyway, um, and it was just delightful to have that experience. The guide took us into the special room where Winston Churchill was actually born when his mother danced too much at a house party and uh, went into labor. Um, and um, it is just, we're there in the summer. It's beautiful in the summer. The light is um, out until nine o'clock at night. Um, I felt very, I would always take very long walks after dinner and there's many places to walk. There's many places to explore. Um, um, going into the um, different colleges um, and the um, even song that we went to um, both times has just been magnificent in terms of the beauty of the voices and then sitting in this magical chapel um, at um, uh, Maudlin College and then um, I think Wals Walsley College. So um, it's been a delightful experience. Um, I found the food very accommodating. I um, um, tend to eat vegetarian and they had plenty of options. Um, and the instruction was just first class. It was great. The people were very friendly. We had a good time talking and I've made several very good friends from both experiences, people that I'm emailing with quite a bit and going and seeing and doing things and getting together with them. So it's just really a, a very terrific um, experience. Um, and um, it's indeed true that there are stairs to climb and, and in the summer there isn't any air conditioning. So, uh, but there's plenty of fans and you just, it's, it works out okay. So it's, it's delightful. I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, the first summer they didn't, it wasn't there last summer, but the Oxford Playhouse is just down the street from Ruley House. And the first summer I was able to go to two performances of these plays that come in and they were 10 pound tickets, which is, you know, something that I did when I, I went to school in London um, years ago and um, there were the 10 pound ticket, five pound probably at that point performances. And it was just, it was just terrific. It was, um, it was nice. We, I would go to tea. There's this lovely little um, tea house um, right next to the uh, Radcliffe um, Observatory or, or um, what, what's that called, Jane? The Radcliffe camera, camera. the Radcliffe camera. Right, yeah. right. And um, just delightful. And, and it's actually in the, in the vault of a, of a church. And um, I would always, you know, allow myself once or twice to go over there and just sit there and the birds would be on my table and having a scone. And it's, it's just delightful. There's so many places to explore. It's, it's, I can't say enough about it. And it's a rigorous um, academic experience too. The two history courses that I took. Um, so the, the Churchill course, and then the second course that I took was England between the um, two wars. And uh, I learned a lot there because I didn't know that much about it. So it was, it was great. So that's me nattering on a bit and I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm trying to think of, um, of what else. No, I think that's good. I've covered just some of the points, just experience of things. Oh, and then we happened in on a, I think it was a five pound theater ticket of a student production of Enemy of the People. It is, um, Jan said um, they have the student productions during that time. And so another um, woman and I went over there and it was just fun. I mean, we just would do things, you know, we just kind of let things happen, which was really nice too, because you're not in your normal routine. So there's a lot of opportunity to really just explore. So there we go.
Well, thanks, Vicki. Um, there's a, a question in here that um, I think you're best uh, able to answer. The question is, is there writing papers, exams, or the like required? Now, in the literature seminar, we don't have any of that, but you've experienced uh, some projects in the history seminar, right? That's correct. We had um, a project, and then there was an optional quiz that... Um, the professor gave and the project, for example, um, last year, it was well in, in two, both, both years, because, um, uh, um, what the teacher did and the very first time it was, I think it might've been the first time that he taught, he came up with this idea of the project and everybody's like, Oh no, 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 I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and then by the beginning of the second week, we started to get into it a little more and, we just had um, people would look into various aspects. For example, for Churchill, someone talked about his cigars and did research on his cigars. Another person did research on all of his daughters. Um, someone wrote a little play. Um, there were just a variety of, of different things that, that happened with that. And that was terrific. And um, same thing, same thing the next year. And it was just fun because people gave different, um, you know, you were able to dig into the topic a little more and two, you were really engaged and you went, you went to the library and looked things up or you went over to um, uh, Blackwell's and found a book on something and, and bought it and read it. So it was fun. It was, it was a different way. It was a deeper uh, relationship with the course material. Uh, Blackwell's, if you don't know, is a, a, a pretty famous uh, bookstore, and um, uh, people spend hours in there. Uh, uh, people who come on our programs, they can't wait to get to Blackwell's, and then they just continue to go back uh, day after day. It's a, it's a fabulous bookstore. Um, okay, I'm going to look through some of the questions here. Uh, there's one question that's asking... Um, how money is handled. So um, if you haven't been to the UK uh, since the pandemic, um, it's changed quite a bit. And uh, the the touchless uh, card system is pretty much everywhere now. Um, last year, I was in England for five weeks and I think I changed a hundred pounds and I still had money left over at the end. I was like purposely trying to spend it. Uh, so really the, uh, you know, the, the card is, is what they're mostly looking for um, these days and you can use it for almost everything. Is that what you experienced, Vicki? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone is asking, uh, what is a couple to do? If one person wants to take the program, but the other is willing to come to Oxford, but isn't interested in the program. Well, the way that the our program runs, uh, ev everyone who is staying in the housing, and that's where you have to stay, that's part of, uh, of how the program is put together, uh, has to participate in the program. I can say that last year at uh, the Senate, there was a woman who was in this position uh, that her um, partner did not want to participate, but he wanted to come. Well, in the end, he decided he would participate, and he was one of the most active people in our discussions. He was just a delight to have with us, so you never know. Um, but yeah, it's not really, uh, the tuition includes the housing, and if you have a single room, that's for one person, not for two. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else have we got in here? Um, okay, someone's asking again about what's included. So airfare is not included and your ground transportation um, to and from uh, London or wherever you're coming to Oxford from is not included. But once you're there at Woolley House, you have your accommodation, you have um, your seminar, you have all the field trips and any transportation that's involved in that. And um, most of the meals are provided. Now, the reason I say, say most, there's always breakfast and uh, there's lunch all but one day, I think. But we've found over the years that because Oxford has a number of really nice restaurants, 
um, people want to have some evenings free from Ruley House so that they can uh, go out to dinner and experience some of the other uh, places. Um, so there are a few nights um, when when dinner is not provided. Um, and so it's really pretty much an all-inclusive except for those meals and it does not include um, your airfare. Now there was a question uh, earlier about what a twin room means. So uh, the rooms are single rooms and if you have um, a twin or a double, it would either have two beds or one bigger bed for two people. Um, so it, it's not like a suite where where each person has their own bedroom. You, you would be sharing um, the same bedroom space. But all of the rooms uh, have a bathroom. Um, most of, uh, I think, I think I'm correct to say that the, um, there's always a shower, but the shower is generally inside of a bathtub. So you have to be able to step over the bathtub to get in and out. Uh, and so there aren't any walk-in showers. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. <clears throat> this is a question about um, access to libraries and museums and visiting other colleges, et cetera. So, you have access to the library at Ruley House, which is pretty good, but you don't have access to other libraries in terms of being able to go there and um, study or to, um, you know, check out books or something. Um, there, You can tour the main library, the, the Bodleian Library, and you can tour the Weston Library, which is part of the Bodleian system. Uh, there is a fee for the tour of the Bodleian and uh, you just go there and sign up for it. I, I can't remember what the price was last year, but I think it's pretty reasonable. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, trip. The museums in Oxford, for the most part, like the Ashmolean and the Pitt Rivers are owned by the university and those are um, free admission. Um, for visiting colleges, because um, during the Fortnite program, uh, there are a lot of exams going on. And so the colleges will post when you can visit and when you can't. They're very concerned about keeping things so the students uh, can get their work done. Uh, and um, they don't want people um, even talking in the courtyards and stuff while the students are in their rooms studying. So. You know, if there's a particular college you want to see, like let's say you want to see Merton, by example, you'll be able to. You just have to kind of manage uh, when they're allowing people in and when they're not. During the Senate, most exams will be over, so there's a little bit more um, freedom for um, visiting the colleges. Most of the colleges um, have a fee for the tour, um, but again, it's a uh, it's you know it's a few pounds. It's it's fairly reasonable to be able to to go in. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Um, so this question is about the meals. Are they a sit down affair with wait staff? Um, and so the there's a mix. Uh, breakfast is a, a a buffet, and you help yourself. Um, they bring you coffee, um, but yeah, you help yourself uh, to the buffet. Um, at lunch, the starter and the dessert are served to the table, but you get your own main from a buffet. And at dinner, it's um, all pl uh, plated, so you're you're sitting down and being served. Each program will have one special dinner. I mentioned that at the Senate, we have St. Edmund's Hall booked, um, one of their dining rooms for the dinner. Um, I believe for the fortnight, we've been having a little trouble getting space because of um, exams and convocations and stuff. But I believe that uh, we've secured space at University Church.
for those of you, if anybody's here tonight that was at Oxford last year, uh, we had uh, our dinner in this this upper room of University Church, and it's a 13th century room, so it was pretty, well, if I'm allowed to say it, it was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some of the people from Oxford that were with us had never been in that room. Uh, one one person who was really quite knowledgeable about the university didn't even know the room existed. Uh, so it, it was a, a really special evening. All right, let's see. Back to the money top topic: credit or debit cards. Um, I don't. I use a credit card, uh, so I don't really know. Um about using uh, debit cards. Um, I'm sorry that I, I don't feel qualified to answer that question. Maybe you could check with your bank and ask them what they recommend uh, for overseas travel. Yeah, and ATMs um, work there the way they do here. It's not a problem. Okay, thank you, Martin. Um, is Oxford as dangerous as watching Inspector Morse would lead you to believe? Uh, that is a fantastic question. Uh, if you are a watcher of PBS or you stream BritBox or anything, um, yeah, you'd think there's at least five murders a day in Oxford. And, um, you know, for fans of Inspector Morse or um, Lewis, uh, Endeavor, um, even you know some of the other shows that that take place uh, nearby, like Midsummer Murder. Um, it there, it's beautiful, wonderful locations for these things. Uh, all that gothic splendor and uh, you know pathways a, a, along the the towpath with the the narrow boats and lots of trees and places for people to hide. But um, I think Oxford is is pretty safe. Um, I've been going there since 2015, and I'm often um, uh, heading back by myself uh, at night. Um, and you know, I mean, I live in a city, so I I I have my spidey sense about those things. But I have never felt uh, endangered, and I never have been endangered while I'm I'm in Oxford, except for the. Um, the sidewalks can really trip you up. <laughs> yeah. And I, I found the same thing as I literally would go out after dinner and mm -hmm. just walk all around. And and there were some times when I thought, well, I think I'm going to head back, um, you know, if it was a situation I wasn't aware of. But two, you can sometimes, sometimes they have ice cream available after dinner, uh -huh. various places that you can walk to. So <laughs> have it. well worth going. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so someone's asking about how many participants are in um, the two seminars uh, with the fortnight and um, what happens if the preferred seminar is full. So just to go over that, <clears throat> the, the classrooms are different sizes. Uh, so it depends on how many seats are in the classrooms. But generally speaking, we have about um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 uh, to 16 seats in the uh, one of the classrooms and then the other classroom will have uh, 12 or 13. Uh, as people register and we see which seminar is getting the more people, then we assign the classroom based on that. If the classroom is filled, uh, then uh, if you still want to come, you would have to take the uh, seminar that still has seats available. Um, we can't make the rooms bigger. And uh, we want people to be comfortable and have a seat at the table. And uh, so we, we don't want to overstuff it. Yeah. Okay. Um, don't know if I'm seeing any other questions. I'm just going to make sure I haven't missed any. Vicki, have you thought anything else you want to say? Well, I just saw that Linda Green put something in there about punting. So maybe. Oh, yeah. I, I just saw it in a in a question that popped up. Yeah, I haven't I haven't done, but I know you've done. Oh yeah, yeah. So I've got that in my background tonight. Yes. Uh, yeah, the um, <clears throat> from um, a good a place that we like to go out from is from Modlin College. There's a bridge uh, just past the college that has a punting station, and um, you just go and you um, sign up and. Um, 
you can hire a chauffeur. You don't have to uh, uh, do this yourself. So you you just uh, they help you into the punt and they take you uh, down usually the Cherwell, uh, and then they bring you um, back to your starting point. And um, if you get uh, you can put four people in a punt, and it's it's fun to to go with other people. Um, but you know, it's a little, you, the, the boat is surprisingly stable because it's wide. Um, so the only tricky part is getting up and down, but they'll help you, um, if you, if you need it. Um, but yeah, I, I love to go punting. It's very peaceful. Um, you always see some ducks and, uh, interesting birds and, and sometimes, uh, you see interesting students that have, uh, somehow or another managed to capsize their punt and uh, are swimming around trying to ride it. Um, but uh, there's various places that you can go punting from. So um, yeah, I, sometimes what we'll do, um, you know, one afternoon, if it's a nice day, we'll just say, does anybody want to go punting? And and we just walk over there and, um, and sign up. So you, it's not like something you have to reserve way in advance. Um, it's, it's, uh, always available. And generally the chauffeurs, the punters are students, uh, not always from Oxford. Sometimes they're students from other colleges that are, um, doing this to earn money. Uh, but they're always, uh, interesting young people to, to, to meet. Um, so Andy Stewart has asked, is there a bigger classroom for the 19 uh, in the Senite? And the answer to that is yes, because we're all in the same classroom, but that particular classroom is not available during the fortnight. Um, the earlier in the summer, really house is busier. And someone's asked what the last day to apply. So <clears throat> um, we have a, What's, I'm sorry, I'm just getting to my web page now so I know what I'm saying is correct. But um, we have um, uh, listed um, for the, um, sorry, I've got to move this over. Um, you know, I'm running three travel programs at the moment, so I'm a little, I just want to make sure I give you the right date. Yes. So we would, we would like to end applications on December 21st. Um, what that means is that we'd like to have all the applications in, have people accepted into the program, and have you um, pay your deposit. Um, this way, you know you're going on the program. You can start to make your travel plans. You can book that airfare over the holidays and, or, um, you know, get everything set. Uh, and it also lets us know uh, where we are with the programs and uh, to make sure that that everything is uh, going well in terms of uh, enough registrations. We already have a number of registrations. I know some of you are here tonight are already registered for one of the programs, but there is still plenty of space. Um, so um, if someone, we will probably turn off the applications after December 21st, unless uh, we still have some seats available. If we still have some spots available, uh, then we'll announce that and um, continue to take applications after that time. Um, someone's asking now about uh, additional lectures during some of the afternoons. Um, so we always have a lecture on uh, Oxford, the town and the university, the gown. So they call it the town and gown lecture. And it's pretty interesting, though, way, you know, Oxford was founded in 1200 something. And uh, so there's quite a story there about how um, things have grown up and uh, there is some conflict between the residents of the town and the university. Um, and it's also got a very interesting structure in that, um, you know, the 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 university, you know, people don't say I went to University of Oxford. They say I went to Christ Church, Oxford or Maudlin, Oxford or Merton, Oxford. Uh, so it's a very different system than what we have here in the United States. So that that's always a fun lecture during the fortnight. <laughs> Cynthia Rutz, who is a basic program instructor will be coming for the second time 
uh, to be with me uh, co-hosting the program. And she'll be taking the uh, history uh, politics seminar, the 15th centuries of the British monarchy. And um, Cindy will give a lecture. Uh, many of you know that um, Shakespeare is uh, very near and dear to her heart. And uh, she's going to do a lecture. I believe the title is The Respect Due to Fathers. And we thought that was good since Father's Day will be taking place uh, during the time that we're in England. Um, there may be one other lecture, um, but when we go to Rosham Gardens, a gentleman named Richard Bisgrove will be accompanying us. And he is um, a lecturer uh, for the Department of Continuing Education. So he will be lecturing on site uh, at the garden and leading us through the garden. Uh, so that's kind of an example. And then at the Ashmolean Museum, I'm still on the fortnight now, uh, we will have a, a curator uh, from the museum uh, showing us uh, a selection of things. We did this once before, and of all the times I'd been in the Ashmolean, I'd never seen these things that she showed us and the way that she, get, the information that she gave. So, so that's another form of on-site lecture. Uh, during the sun night, we'll also have that uh, town and gown lecture. And um, <clears throat> then uh, when we go to Chawton, um, Emma Plaskett will be with us and she'll be lecturing on site at Chawton House and at the J Jane Austen uh, House Museum. Uh, let's see. Airfares are problematic to London this year. Uh you know, I, I do want to say that um, sometimes if you're a little outside the window, um, it's more expensive to book. So, you know, prices, you can look on Google Flights and, you know, do you show, they, they'll show you, you know, if it's expected to, to fluctuate. But I have typically booked my airfare in um, late December or early January. So, I don't know. Uh, there's that. Um, yes, the programs, both programs start on the first day. So in the fortnight's case, that's June 2nd. In the Senate, it's June 16th, I think, if I've got this right. Uh, and we begin at lunch. So your rooms become available uh, just about maybe um, 12, 1230. And uh, then we have lunch, and then we always do a little walking tour for people who are new. Uh, we give them a orientation to Ruley House and show you the surrounding neighborhood so you know where you can buy the charger you left at home or, uh, you know, a coffee or whatever you need, some water for your room. Um, and uh, then uh, in the evening, uh, about 545 on each of those days, we'll have a orientation with the tutors. Uh, and uh, representatives from the Department of Continuing Education. And then we have a welcome reception and dinner. The next day, the Monday, breakfast is at eight o'clock. Uh, the seminar starts at nine o'clock. Uh, lunch is right after that. And then there's activities, you know. So it really uh, kicks off uh, that first uh, uh, full day. Got to be ready for that. <laughs> Uh, someone had asked something, I believe, about um, arriving early. Um, once people register, I send out information about um, hotels in the area that are near. Um, I also send out uh, information about um, how you can uh, make a, a reservation at Ruley House if they have availability. Um, sometimes that requires you to call them. Um, and it is possible that you won't have the same room that you'll have during your program. So you may have to switch rooms on the first day of your program. Um, this is a, someone's asking if there's any credit available. This is a non-credit program and uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, credit available for uh, coming to Oxford. Now, if you're in a particular kind of master's program where you can do some sort of um, 
a arrangement with a professor that you're going to go to Oxford and you're going to study whatever Jane Austen or British monarchy, and then you're going to turn a paper into that professor, whoever they may be, uh, you might be able to make some kind of arrangement like that. But through the Graham School, um, there is no credit of available. Okay. First, they want to know about the first day. Now they want to know about the last day. The last day, uh, the program ends after breakfast. We are requested to be out of our rooms by 10 a.m. Uh, you can store bags uh, at reception if you need to. Uh, and uh, the buses that go to and from the airports in London leave from a very nearby uh, Gloucester Green uh, bus station. And uh, there's uh, they're about every 20 to 30 minutes. So uh, it depends on the time of day. Some uh, stretched out a little bit more sometimes, and then sometimes it's every 20 minutes. So it's very frequent and um, not expensive and easy to do. Um, the airline, that's actually a name of a bus company, the airline bus, uh, is the one that most people use if they're coming directly from Heathrow or Gatwick. At Heathrow, if you come into Terminal 5, you just walk out the door from baggage claim and the bus stops right there. If you come into Terminals 2 or 3, um, I don't think you come into one. I think it's either 2 or 3. Um, you go to the central bus station, which there's plenty of signage to lead you to the central bus station. And uh, then you get on the, the airline bus uh, heading to Oxford. It takes about 90 minutes. Ruley House is conveniently near the final stop on the bus. So you don't have to worry about missing your stop because it's the final stop and everybody has to get off. So that's Gloucester Green Terminal. Uh, someone's asking, are there other seminars offered one or two weeks that will be scheduled later in the summer? Uh, are the Oxford programs through University of Chicago, uh, through the, the Graham School, uh, are these programs that take place in June? So the Fortnite in Oxford and the Sem Senite in Oxford are our programs with seminars that are specifically designed uh, for our students. All right, don't wanna keep you too long. Let's see if there's any more questions coming in. I wanna thank you all again for, for coming and thank Vicki and Katia, who's behind the scenes here helping out. Um, and uh, just, I don't know, I you know, I said in my little thing that it's difficult to explain what Oxford can mean to people. Um, there's just really something about it that is very special. Um, conversations that you overhear, um, just there's a politeness in Oxford that is that you don't always experience in other places. Uh, of course, it's ancient, which just makes it so interesting. Uh, of course, they, they do also have uh, lots of modern things as well. And um, uh, you know, their their institutes and, and uh, the things that are happening on their campus are pretty terrific. Um, but uh, uh, people, that's why people come back year after year, because they want to experience again. And uh, I, ho I hope that, that you'll decide to join us, if not this year, sometime in the future. Uh, someone else is asking, have most of the participants been from the Chicago area? So this program has always been um, open to UChicago alumni, which means that we've always had people from across the U.S. come. Uh, when I started in the program, there was a lady from Hawaii. There was someone from Washington State. Uh, so no, it's not just people from the Chicago area. Well, if no one has any other questions, um, we can um, wrap it up. I'm gonna put my email address in the chat here for you if you have any questions. I think I typed it right, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and um, once again, we really thank you for participating. I, I hope we've uh, inspired you and answered your questions and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you. Okay, all right. Good night, everyone.
Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Vicki. Oh, I'm it's a pleasure. To, I'm trying to figure out how to end the recording, but I can't find the button. <laughs> Here. Is this someone it? said they couldn't see the email. Oh. This one? To everyone. And what is it? I'll put it in. Oh, Jan? it's Jan Watson at uchicago.edu.